It's Thursday, February 18, 2021. Hello and welcome to News Desk with me, Daniel Dazib. In our headlines, Mr. Mohammed's lawyers will this morning be seeking to urge the Apex Course to set aside its earlier decision not to compel EC Chairperson Jean Mensa to testify. The hearing time has been changed. We'll tell you why. Now, some university students are kicking against a suggestion to increase retirement age to 65. All this and more coming up within the R. Stay with us. In our first story, a push to halt proceedings and overturn a decision not to compel EC Chairperson Jean Mensa to testify. And now the quest of lawyers for Mr. Mahama as Supreme Court resumes hearing of the 2020 election petition today. Uh, we understand that Mr. Mahama's lawyers will this morning be seeking to urge the Apex Court to set aside its earlier decision not to compel EC Chairperson Jean Mensa to testify. The hearing has been moved to 11.30 a.m. Kweku Asante joins us from the court. First of all, Kweku, we understand that Mr. Mohammed's lawyers actually wrote to the court to ask them to move the hearing to 11.30 a.m. Right, Daniel. So this morning at about 8.20 a.m., the Supreme Court received a letter from Mr. Tony Lita, the solicitor for John Dramani Mahama, urging the court to move the hearing time from 9.30 to 11.30, citing reasons that some of the documents that the respondents had filed came to them as late as 11 p.m. last night, and so they need some time, at least two hours, for the lead counsel for the petitioner, Mr. Chachuchikata, to be able to go through those documents and make um, legal representations of same in court today. And let me read part of the letter that was sent to the Chief Justice and signed by Mr. Tony Lita. It reads, I received a call from the registrar of the court close to midnight, notifying me of respondents filed affidavits of proposing petitioner's application for review, soft copies of which is sent to my mail at 11.13 p.m. I forwarded the processes to lead counsel for petitioner at 11.30 p.m. In order to allow lead counsel for petitioner reasonable time to factor the said affidavits into his arguments in support of the application for review, I would respectfully request for this morning's proceedings be commenced at 11.30 instead of the scheduled 9.30. And so, it was expected that a court will consider this letter that had been written to the Chief Justice in his administrative role as head of the judiciary. And so at 9.30 when the court was scheduled to sit, the registrar of the Supreme Court, Mr. Ntia, came in and announced that the Supreme Court judges had received this letter and had consequently moved that the sitting for this hearing be commenced at 11.30 a.m. instead of the scheduled 9.30. And so since the decision was made, the Electoral Commission Chairperson, Madam Jean Mensa, has since departed the premises of the court together with her deputies, obviously to return at 11.30, as well as other counsel who have, all, who have also left the court premises as of now, Daniel. Who was, you say that uh, the Jean Mensa, the Electoral Commission Chairperson, was there. I take it then that her legal team was also present, and so was Mr. Kufado's legal team. Right, and so at 9.30 when the hearing was supposed to commence, as was set at the last agenda date, all legal representations of both the petitioners and the first and second respondents were in court and were all seated, waiting for the court announcer to say court rights for the judges to come in. But at 9.30, we would usually expect that the, 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 the judges would come in, but the registrar came in rather and announced that because of this letter, the, the hearing had been moved to 11.30. And so at the time, 9.30, when the sitting was originally scheduled to start, all legal representations as well as the parties were present in court. We obviously know that Mr. John Romani Mahama, who had filed the uh, petition, had, has not been coming to court these days. He came on the first and second days, but has not been coming these days and is represented sometimes by uh, Mr. Johnson, the sitting chair, the general secretary of the NDC, or his running mates in the 2020 general elections, Professor Nana Jinopukwajiman. Professor Nana Jinopukwajiman was in court today, obviously, to represent the petitioner. But mm -hmm. because of this two hours shift and the originally scheduled time for the hearing, things would have to stay mm -hmm. until then 
for the court to come in and hear the substantive review application. Tell me how the lead counsel uh, for the respondents, both first and second respondents, tell me how they reacted to this announcement by the court. Right, so before all of them came in, our understanding was that all of the parties had received a copy of this letter. Indeed, I had cited a copy of the letter that was written by Mr. Tony Lita to the Chief Justice, uh, embossed by a, a, a stamp from Ekufuado Prempe and Co who had the legal representation of Mr. Uh, Kufuado. And so at the time this came in, they were obviously aware that the petitioner had made such a move to the court. And so this was not the judges coming in so that the, the lawyers for both parties could have said something. So officially they did not say anything on record, but you could sense from the down there, I mean looking from the gallery up above the Supreme Court, they're remembering to each other, but officially they've not said anything, and we're obviously waiting for the next two hours for the substantive hearings to commence. Daniel. Kweku, thank you very much for uh, bringing us those updates. We'll come back to the court at 11.30 when the justices resume.